Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. In part one of my tutorial on displacement mapping, I mentioned that there were a few pitfalls to look out for. Let's talk about those here. The first pitfall is that many people fall into the trap of thinking that if they move their layer around over a displacement map, it will change the way that the image is distorted kind of like this. Unfortunately, this is not the case. Moving an image around over a displacement map will not change the way that the image distorts, and that's because an image and its displacement map are locked together meaning that the displacement map is centered on the layer and moves with it, so motion doesn't affect the distortion of the layer. Again, let me remind you that this is all under the hood. The actual layer being used as a displacement map will look exactly the same and stay in the same position. The point is that the way in which the layer distorts has nothing to do with the position of the layer in relation to its displacement map. That said, it doesn't mean you can't get the effect we're talking about. In this composition, I have Mr. Groovy over a static displacement map. In other words, the displacement map is not animated in any way. It's a still image. Nothing changes over time. If I move Mr. Groovy over his displacement map, as you can see, even though I'm moving over the varying degrees of brightness, Mr. Groovy stays exactly the same, which is not what we want. We want Mr. Groovy to distort as he moves over the black and white areas. So how do we do this? Well, that depends on what version of After Effects you're using. First, let's talk about After Effects 7 because it's much simpler. Select Mr. Groovy in the timeline and then choose Layer, Precompose. In the Precompose dialog, I'm going to name the new composition Mr. Groovy Precomp. And then I'll choose Leave All Attributes. Also, I'll uncheck Open New Composition since I don't need this and then click OK. If I drag Mr. Groovy along here, we're still not seeing any change. There's one more thing that we need to do, and that's collapse the transformations for the layer. To do that, in the timeline, click on the Mr. Groovy Precomp Layers Collapse Transformation switch here, which looks like a little sun. Now, I'm not going to get into exactly what collapsing transformations does overall, because there's a lot to cover here. Check out your After Effects help files for more information on this. However, in our case, collapsing our transformations has the effect of infinitely expanding the boundaries of the original Mr. Groovy layer. That's not exactly what it's doing, but that's as good of a short explanation as I can give you. Anyway, after I do that, as you can see, while I drag Mr. Groovy around over the background, he distorts properly. Well, that was After Effects 7. The solution for After Effects 6.5 is a bit more complicated and requires us to pre-compose our animation in another composition and then nest that composition in our main composition. Here's how it works. First, let's look at the composition we're going to nest. In this composition that I'm calling Groovy Moves, I have a simple animation of Mr. Groovy moving from left to right across the screen. With that animation set up, I'm going to jump into my main composition, which contains the static grayscale image that I'll be using as a displacement map, and then nest Groovy Moves in here. Now that I've nested the Groovy Moves composition in my main comp, I'll apply the displacement map effect to it. In the timeline, select the Groovy Moves pre-comp, and then choose Effect, Distort, Displacement Map. Okay, I'll quickly go into the effects controls and change the settings so that Mr. Groovy uses our background layer as the displacement map, and I'll also raise the maximum displacement values a bit for both properties. Now, as you can see, as Mr. Groovy moves along the screen and over the displacement map, his distortion changes. What's going on here is that by pre-composing Mr. Groovy's left-to-right animation, the layer being distorted is no longer changing its position. While Mr. Groovy is grooving along here, that motion is actually happening in a different composition. That means that the displacement map doesn't move with Mr. Groovy because the effect isn't actually applied directly to him. It's applied to the nested composition called Groovy Moves, which is really standing still in our main composition. As a result, After Effects is treating groovy moves as if it were video footage of a moving object, not an actual moving layer. The result is that Mr. Groovy now distorts as he moves over the displacement map. Not a bad solution, all things considered. Okay, one other pitfall I want to discuss. While the displacement map effect uses another layer for its distortion, it can only use the layer, not any effects applied to the layer. By that, I mean that if I have an effect that alters the way that my displacement map looks, such as, I don't know, fractal noise or checkerboard or any other effect for that matter, After Effects will ignore all of that and just use the source. So if I were using a gray solid that had the fractal noise effect applied to it, when I told After Effects to use the gray solid as the displacement map, virtually nothing happens. And that's because After Effects is using only the gray solid color. It's not using the fractal map that's created by the fractal noise effect. So then, how do you get After Effects to use the fractal noise as your displacement map? 
Well, the solution requires us to pre-compose the gray solid. To do that, select the gray solid in the timeline and choose Layer, Pre-Compose. In the Pre-Compose dialog, I'll choose the name DMAP for Displacement Map and then make sure to choose Move All Attributes into the New Composition, which places both the layer and any effects, among other things, in the New Composition. If you choose the Keep All Attributes option here, this whole thing we're doing won't work, so make sure you choose the right one. Click OK and you'll see that our gray solid layer is now pre-comped and nested in our main composition. More importantly, the displacement effect is working correctly. Again, by pre-comping the layer with the fractal noise, the displacement map effect is no longer using the gray solid as the displacement map. Instead, it's using the nested composition as the displacement map. As a result, After Effects is treating the DMAP comp as if it were a picture of a grayscale image, not a gray solid with an effect on it. Alright, I'm going to end this here for now, but in part 3 of my series on displacement mapping, we're going to cover displacement with regard to text, which, while being somewhat similar, works a bit differently. We'll also cover something called time displacement, which uses the pixels of an image to play with the timing of your footage. So stay tuned. Don't forget, you can download the files for this podcast at www.creativecow.net forward slash AEPodcast. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.